Hey, it's me, fashionably late to the party per usual. Although technically I am making this Met Gala video closer to the date of my first Met Gala video, which was the first video I ever made on this channel. So I may be late to a trend, but I am early to an anniversary. I know the whole point of the original Met Gala challenge was to make an existing Met Gala dress, but there was a little thing in me, call it inspiration or hubris, that made me want to make my own design. So I did some research. Apparently the 2020 Met Gala was supposed to be themed about time. And the whole gist of it was this idea of reoccurring fashion trends through the decades and how history repeats itself through its fashions. I just got stuck with this idea of how 18th century makeup is kind of similar to e-girl makeup and then ran with that. I started off with a couple on the nose designs and then settled on a sort of dress that is really more mimicking of 1950s evening gowns. I'm not saying that I'm as accomplished of a fashion designer designer as real Met Gala fashion designers. If anything, the shape and silhouette of this mixed with the shiny black material I'm using kind of just makes this look like the kinkiest prom dress ever. But hey, I spent months on it, so might as well show you guys the process and what came out of it. So let's get going. I started off this totally useful project by rolling out an extra long roll of butcher paper to my height and then took a quick nap on it. After about three hours, I woke up, took out a pencil and roughly marked where my waist hits on the paper and then cut that out. Then I divided the length of my waist by 14 and got four inches. So I marked four inches on the tip of each panel piece, about 14 skirt panels in total in order to make a very full length skirt at the bottom that also is the circumference of my waist at the top. Then used my tape measure to make a diagonal line connecting the two edges of the four inches to the sides of each panel in order to make a triangular pattern. Or I guess in this case, it's more just a very long trapezoid. And because this paper is pretty flimsy, I'm going to reinforce it with some gauge wire. I'm placing it on only one side and on the edge of each piece just to save on wire and so when I put them all together there will be a wire on each seam of the skirt. This was a bit of corner cutting that later on bit me in the ass and because it's cut wire also poked me in the ass. But can you blame me? Look at all the panels I had to tape on here. Now onto the main attraction of this project, black garbage bags, because the production value on this channel is only the best. I cut along the seams on the trash bags and then opened them up so they'd be extra long. Then I whipped out my nearly forgotten school glue and then glued along the sides of each pattern piece before sticking them two at a time onto the trash bag. Since the trash bag material is so lightweight and flimsy, I had to glue on these extra paper and wire pieces in order to give it more structure because I had made a very structured dress design. In hindsight, if I were to do this again, I would probably go for a more lighter draped type dress. But hey, no one truly prepares to make a trash bag dress. Ooh, what am I doing now? Oh yeah, once the glue had dried, I cut off the edges of the paper so it would just be neat trash bag skirt pieces. I don't want the edges of the fabric to start separating, so I folded over the edges and taped them down. And then I did the same to the bottom edge of the skirt. I'm kind of living for how seamless and clean these skirt pieces look, so I just couldn't wait. I connected all the pieces together with masking tape just to see how they would go together as a skirt. And I'm fairly impressed with how full it is. It is a bit flatter than I had hoped it would be, but I think we can fix that later. I took the same approach when making my bodice, basically just connecting a series of panels that are long trapezoids, except instead of butcher paper, I used a slightly more sturdier poster paper. And like with the skirt, I glued on some trash bag material onto it, but I think I did it wrong because it's slightly wrinkled, but don't worry, I fixed that later. And because it's probably unwise to try to sew this material, I'm instead going going to fix the seams by stapling them. I'm sure you might be thinking, oh, you're wasting staples, but look how clean the seam is. When I tried on the bodice, it at first looked like just a bunch of tubing and didn't do anything for my figure. So I pinched the front panels together 
to make it look more like a fan. And I think that helps with the illusion of a more fitted waist. I reinforced the back panels with a more sturdy black duct tape so I could turn the back into a lace-up corset. I made holes with my hole puncher, obviously, and then I laced it up with some ribbon that you would use to wrap a present. Again, that whole hindsight makes me think that I should have used a more sturdier string to tie this all together because when I would pull too tightly, I would end up ripping it, but you know, Again, we don't prepare for these things. Okay, back to the skirt. Upon actually trying it on, I realized it is really big that it doesn't even fit through my tiny little mirror. And surprise, surprise, it is just as flimsy as it is loud to wear. So in order to give the skirt more support, naturally, I just signed it up for therapy. And how does that make you feel? Interesting. And then of course I just stapled all the seams. And that mix with rounding out the wire at the bottom made it stand up on its own pretty well. Enough so that Linda managed to want to hide under there. <laughs> hey, get out of there. Linda, come, come over, <laughs> get over here. You terrify me on a daily basis. To add more volume and frill on the top of the skirt, I made a cheeky little peplum out of that same poster paper I did on the bodice. The shape of this came a bit more fast and loose where I just made the panels longer at the back and then gradually made them shorter coming towards the front. I accidentally made this more of a tropical bird peplum. So to have it match the rest of the dress, I'm gonna paint it all black. I debated on whether I just glued trash bags onto it like I do with the bodice, but I didn't want to risk losing the shape and structure of the original peplum. Also, somehow I thought that painting it would be much easier, but halfway through this project, I realized that's really stupid. I can never take the easy way out, can't I? Hey, I know I look slightly ludicrous right now, but I'm in the process of getting my makeup done, and I actually like tried to go full coverage for this since this is like a Met Gala glamour shoot. I'm getting to the eye shadow stage and I'm feeling a bit of like a green and black sort of situation, especially since I'm bridging e-girl and Rococo style. So we're just gonna freestyle, improvise. I just had a thought, if I actually wore this dress on a red carpet and people asked me, oh, who are you wearing? I could say stuff like Dolce and Garbaggia, Basuda Republic, Vera Waste, Rot Couture. I'm just a literal trash human. Oh no, my poof is falling. No, my poof. I would say this is such a dramatic transformation that face ID didn't recognize my face. I put on fake lashes. That went a bit, uh, I got a bunch of Hot Topic e-girl necklaces to complete the look. You know, the great thing about this bodice is that there's quite a bit of room inside of it. So if you need to do a touch up on mascara, you can just like drop it in there. If you're bored on the red carpet, you can just bring yourself a book, maybe two books. If you want to play a prank on Anna Wintour, you know, just, you want to bring along your animal friend. There you go. Oh, you look so cute in there, honey. Oh, she's really exploring in there. Good thing she has a book to keep her company. Don't ever talk to me or my daughter ever again. It is so hot outside, so I'm literally melting. So we gotta get this photo shoot done fast. Plus Marie Antoinette is just the 80s.